What is a survival myth that is completely wrong and could get you killed? If you ever find yourself in snake country, make as much noise as possible. Most people want to avoid snakes so stay quiet, but they are more scared of you than you are of them. Talk loudly, stomp, but obviously keep an eye and ear out for any fellas who don't want you to be there. Source, Australian. Except for the death adder, which will lie there and ignore 19 people stepping over it then bite the 20th one who has the bad luck to step on it. Easy solution, just get bit by a death subtractor. Follow flying birds to find water they can simply be flying to spend a night anywhere, so we can't rely on them. Fish are the ones you should follow to find water. You do not need to wait 24 hours to report a missing person. If you think someone is missing report it as such. The faster a missing person report is filed the greater the chance the person will be found. Especially if it's a child. Missing children are at high risk during the first 24 hours especially if abducted. In 76% of child abduction murders, the victim was dead within 3 hours. 88.5% were dead in the first 24 hours. Edit, Source It's actually a felony in some states to fail to report a child missing after a certain amount of time. Edit, Cayley's Law Sucking a snake bite, it will often make it worse. Removing a bullet is more dangerous than leaving it in. Trying to remove it can tear vital organs, it can be pushed in even deeper, or removing it can cause the person to bleed out. Yep. There is pretty much no reason to ever go digging around in a gunshot wound in the field with a pair of pliers, trying to get a bullet out. Your only goal is to control bleeding and, if possible, prevent infection. And then get to a hospital, because if you got gut or chest shot you're going to die in one of many horrible, slow ways if you don't get into surgery. The first mistake is to look for food and water first before having a shelter up to keep yourself dry and warm. Edit, when I say shelter first it includes having a fire too which I forgot to mention. When you are wet and exposed to the elements your core body temperature can drop and you can get hypothermia if it gets too cold and you would burn more calories than necessary. A big reason to building a shelter too is to also keep yourself off the ground because the ground is an infinite heat sink which means you lose your body heat way faster than you would think and will be more exposed to the cold elements. Guys yes it's good to be near a water source, but remember that it's always colder around rivers, streams, lakes, and oceans. Make sure you are able to easily gather shelter fire material within the area. Plus, finding a prime location to set up shelter. I feel like a book R and thanks for the silver. Shelter, water, food. In that order. Don't eat snow to stay hydrated if you're in a winter survival situation. Losing the heat to the snow while eating it is more dangerous than dehydration. Heat it up or let it melt in a container first to lose less heat. If you have to forage for food, avoid mushrooms entirely. Odds are so slim you will find an edible kind that you're much better off looking for things like nuts, seeds, and berries. Edit, this is not the myth, this is the truth. They also hold negligible amounts of calories so even if you are knowledgeable about fungi it still isn't worth it. Guess the only scenario where you might go for it, is if you have knowledge on edible mushrooms and stumble upon a grove full of them. One I know of is the myth that you can drink water from a cactus. I heard it's false and you can only drink from a small minority of cacti without having certain health consequences I am not aware of. Herbivorous animals are friendly and peaceful, so you are safe being around them and their presence will show you where food is. Seriously everything from cows to deer can and will kill you if you make it angry. It is usually a good idea if you are in the wilds not to get near any large wild animal, but herbivores can often be even more aggressive than the predators. If a predator attacks you, you have a fairly good chance of scaring it off, especially if it's smaller than you, because it's likely only looking for food. If a herbivore attacks you, you're ducked because it genuinely wants to kill you. If it's a predator, you just need to convince it that you aren't worth the effort. Especially if it's not too hungry. If it's a herbivore, that's just going to make it want to kill you more. They say the rabbit runs and fights harder than the fox because the rabbit is fighting for its life while the fox is just fighting for its dinner. Yep, that's an actual thing in behavioral ecology. It's called the life dinner principle. The life dinner principle thought you were joking. Till. You can hydrate from soda. If that's all you have, drink it. Fallout New Vegas tells me otherwise. You get a cap though. 
If you get stabbed with anything, don't pull it out since it could be the thing that preventing you from bleeding out. Instead immobilize it and go to the hospital where they can stop the bleeding when they remove the object. That knife is in your aorta. If you remove it you'll bleed to death. Consider that a professional courtesy. Thanks John, really appreciate it. Don't stand underneath doorways in case of earthquakes. Doors and door frames are just not made the same anymore, so you're more likely to sustain more serious injuries if you do. You're better off staying hidden underneath a desk or table. My computer desk fell apart in my hands trying to move it. Not just doorways are made poorly. There was a till that fires used to take 7 minutes to move to the next room in a house in the 40s. But now it takes 50 seconds because all the furniture is cheap or less dense wood. Drinking alcohol to stay warm. You sweat, your blood will rush to your skin and you will freeze it much faster. Edit, people seem curious about this. Here is a good link. aldrinkaware.co.uk edit 2, as suggested by another redditor youtube.be edit 3, actual Mythbusters link provided by another redditor youtube.com. Not to mention it thins your blood. I remember reading about the Royal Navy giving rescued sailors during the Battle of the Atlantic rum to warm them up, their survival rate was hugely improved when they stopped. Edit, okay, it doesn't thin your blood. I heard wrong. The thinning of blood doesn't play as a big a factor as does your blood vessels dilating. This in turn causes increased blood flow near the surface of the skin which heats your skin up. This becomes a problem because of the way your skin and ultimately your body regulates temperature. Your skin has thermosensors but they don't just detect temperature intuitively, but rather through the rate at which heat can be transferred to from you. That is why you can touch two separate things of different material, i.e. metal and cloth, which are at the same temperature and yet you'll perceive one as colder hotter than the other. The metal is transferring heat from you faster than cloth so would feel cold. Now because alcohol sort of sabotages this mechanism by indirectly heating up your skin from increased blood flow, your skin isn't actually able to accurately detect the difference in temperature between the air and yourself. As a result, you feel warm but in reality are losing heat faster than you would have had you not drank. I can think of multiple, basic wilderness survival is required to be taught where I live, don't drink your pee if you're thirsty. It's high in salt and will make you more dehydrated, just like ocean water. Eating snow when you're thirsty is also bad it lowers your core temperature and you can become hypothermic. Don't play dead with all bears. Depends on the bear some will definitely duck your shit up if you play dead. Grizzly bears stand your ground and back up slowly, if it becomes irritated get into the fetal position and cover your neck and play dead. Black bears throw rocks and sticks at it, and make a lot of noise. From my experience, black bears are skittish and run away. Polar bears back away slowly to safety, if they attack prey they kill you fast defend yourself by any means necessary remember to always carry bear spray or a gun if you're in bear country at it, thank your silver, kind stranger. Apparently some people think the best way to survive a wolf attack is to bend down and show the wolf you're submissive towards him and pose as no threat. If you do this, you're dead. The wolf will 100% kill you. Your best bet is to walk away without turning your backs on them, maintaining eye contact the whole way. If you look away or turn your back the wolf's killer instinct will kick in and it'll kill you. Don't make a lot of noise and aggressive movements towards a wolf the same way you'd do to a black bear because most likely it'll be seen as a challenge, not a threat. This is mostly inconsequential either way, wolves almost never kill adult humans. For example, n.m.wikipedia.org there have been only two verified fatal healthy wild wolf attacks on humans in North America. Below are a list of verified, questionable and unverified attacks. Cotton wicks moisture. Cotton is probably the worst material to wear in an outdoor survival situation because it holds moisture and in doing so loses its ability to keep you warm. The YouTube videos on how to unarm an attacker from close range. You'll die before you can yell yeehaw. Yeah, if you have not trained extensively in real self-defense, you should never try to fight an armed opponent. Just give them what they want or run. Those videos usually have the person letting the moves be put on them very easily. When in reality a lot of those moves need to be executed at extremely fast speed with practice precise. Otherwise you will just end up in a wrestling match against someone with a knife, which usually won't end well. There's a video of a soldier showing how to win in a knife fight, the countdown starts and as soon as possible he just books it. I used to run cash parking lots for events. Attendants regularly would have to handle thousands of dollars in cash, 
sometimes alone or nearly so I instituted what we called the $200 rule. No attendant should have more than $200 in their hand at any time. Ever. Cash over $200 went into a pocket until I could pick it up. The plan was, if they were ever mugged, had a knife or gun put in their face etc., they were to instantly take that $200 then throw it at the mugger, and run like hell towards the nearest well-lit populated area. The mugger would of course be too busy picking up the $200 to injure the attendant and or get the big stash of money in the attendant's pocket it happened twice. Both times the attendant got away no problem and we sacrificed $200 or less for his safety. Money well spent. That's like what sea cucumbers do if they're being chased. They have a second set of lungs that they can shit out. The predator eats the tasty shit lungs, allowing the cucumber to get away. The spare lungs grow back in a week or two. It's true what they say, sea cucumbers really do live different lives to us.